Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. It's incredible to think that even in the era of personalized therapy for non-small cell lung cancer, that most patients with that disease will still be treated with cytotoxic chemotherapy. Chemotherapy has long been used as a palliative treatment for patients with stage four non-small cell lung cancer. That's because in that setting, it's been shown to not only prolong life, but improve quality of life and symptom control. It's no surprise then that even to this day, chemotherapy remains a backbone for the treatment of most patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Now, in the context of targeted therapies, one can also think of chemotherapy as a targeted therapy itself. I think the problem is that uh, us academics haven't quite figured out why chemotherapy is a targeted agent. We know that it acts on many cellular processes that cancer cells use to survive, proliferation, angiogenesis, et cetera. We just haven't found the correct biomarker or the target of choice that allows us to personalize chemotherapy to the extent that we are able to personalize targeted therapies such as EGFR or ALK inhibitors. I think it's a, it's very exciting uh, to uh, be able now to molecularly parse out uh, lung cancers. I think uh, we're all uh, very excited about uh, the identification of driver mutations uh, in lung cancer that make these patients uh, candidates for targeted therapy. Um, I think we have to keep in mind, however, uh, that despite these advances, uh, the cornerstone for the majority of our patients, the cornerstone treatment for the majority of our patients is still uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy. Roughly 60% uh, of my patients, 60 to 70% of my patients still receive uh, chemotherapy as a first-line treatment. And what we know about chemotherapy in the advanced stage setting is that uh, it extends life. Uh, it's also been shown to improve quality of life. Uh, and in the end, I think it's important uh, that we pick out those drugs uh, that are both efficacious uh, but also tolerable. And I think that's very important. We're talking about a palliative care, excuse me, a palliative setting where treatment goals are to extend life in the advanced stage setting, not to cure people. Um, I think what we know about chemotherapy, even for those patients that harbor uh, genetic alterations like EGFR and ALK, is that these, uh, many of the drugs, many of the newer agents are extremely active in patients who have uh, driver mutations. Um, and so I think even for patients who have these genetic alterations in which they receive targeted therapy first, I think chemotherapy remains an option once uh, these patients progress on targeted treatment. Finally, I think we're starting to see some early signals uh, that chemotherapy may augment some of the responses seen with these newer drugs like PD-1 and PDL one drugs. I think there's been data uh, recently presented at this past year's ASCO meeting to suggest competitive outcomes when combining chemotherapy with PD-1 and PDL one drugs. So I think we, again, have to remember that while there's a tremendous amount of excitement with the identification of all these different molecular targets, uh, we need to remain grounded and, and, and realize that, that chemotherapy still remains the cornerstone of treatment for the majority of our patients with advanced stage disease. Hopefully that will change in the next five to 10 years, but for now I think we need to, to really uh, learn how to optimize the chemotherapy options that we have. Chemotherapy is here to stay for the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer. It is the only modality that improves survival in patients who've had resected disease. It improves outcome with radiation in patients with locally advanced disease. And we know that it improves quality of life, um, lessens burdens from symptoms of cancer, and improves overall survival in patients with metastatic disease. Now, although we, um, in 2014 and beyond, uh, look for oncogenic drivers in which to target certain drugs and really give precision medicine, the vast majority of patients still um, today don't have a targetable mutation. 
most patients in the frontline setting in absence of having an EGFR mutation or ALK translocation um, will see systemic chemotherapy as a first pass of treatment. Um, we have made steady gains um, over decades, um, of basing sort of on foundational science. We know that chemotherapy, when we think of it in its most conventional sense, is are, are targeted drugs that exploit um, cell cycle perturbations. And so we know that chemotherapy, when we think of it generally, is um, more toxic to cancer cells than to normal cells. But we have come a long way in recent years in terms of supportive care and making this chemotherapy more manageable. We continue to have much work to do um, in optimizing the best chemotherapy for patients who don't have a targetable mutation. Um, and also in a salvage therapy in patients who may have a particular target. So we know that cisplatin and carboplatin have been the backbone of treatment for, um, for a couple of decades. The optimal partner um, to create a a doublet has often uh, been primarily based on um, physician preferences and patient preferences. So things like alopecia or neuropathy may factor into the, into the decision. What we really need to do, though, is understand if there are chemotherapy drugs that are uh, better suited to particular histology or biology of disease. I think the best um, illustration of that is the development of pemetrexid. So as you remember, cisplatin and pemetrexid was compared to cisplatin and trimcitabine in an all-comer non-small cell lung cancer trial. And it was, the trial was um, designed to be a non-inferiority study. It was not until after the study did we recognize that cisplatin and pemetrexid improved survival in the non-squamous population in comparison to cisplatin and gemcitabine. From that, we've tried to elucidate the mechanisms. There's some data that perhaps expression of thymidylate synthase may um, lessen the efficacy of pemetrexid. That kind of work is what we need to do to find the best agent for a particular histology and biologic characteristics. It may be that certain cancers are better treated by a taxane. It may be some cancers are better treated by um, a nucleoside analog, such as gemcitabine. Uh, we need to continue to, to look for molecular and biologic clues, I think, to, to find the best combination based on a particular expression profile. Although that is our goal, there's still some uh, work to be done. I think most of the data, or most of the current efforts to design the best chemotherapy doublet uh, depends upon patient preference and, and physician preference still in 2014.